I'm getting up to two years. And I figured it, this would be a good time to try and contribute back because I got a lot out of the program when I was there. I did the, the C Sharp program. Before there was Python and all these other current programs, which are pretty awesome. Um, and then being a lifelong learner myself, I've been learning a lot since the, the boot camp. I figured it was uh, an opportunity as well for me to share a few other things I've picked up along the way. So here's the agenda. Pretty simple stuff. We're just going to do a little intro about me, how I found my first job, and the trials and tribulations involved. Um, my first year as a as a web developer and how I got too comfortable and decided to move on. Um, so a few tools and resources I've used that might help you and then an opportunity for us to do a little bit of Q&A. So this is me. I just recently turned 30 years old. I like anything that goes Zoom. As you can see from my photo, I've got a Skateboard, that's an electric skateboard. It goes like 25 miles an hour, and that's what I was using to commute to work in Manhattan. I live in Manhattan, New York, and uh, I would get around the city that way before COVID. And now that it's COVID, I kind of just go for fun on weekends. I've also upgraded, and I'll, there's a little picture at the, at the end of the slide. You'll see what I have now. Um, so I didn't really start off as a developer or in the space. Um, I'm originally from Silicon Valley kind of the tech hub of the world right now. And I didn't think I had the chops to be a developer. So my, my dad owned a construction company and I started off as a tile setters helper. helper. And um, I hated it. It was a lot of work. I was carrying cement, I was carrying tile. It was dirty, dusty, and it involved a lot of, uh, a lot of early mornings and, and tired afternoons. So eventually I came upon the Tech Academy because my mother-in-law uh, happens to know Eric, which I think all of you should know from the videos. If you don't, you will soon. Um, and he's just such a great guy. When I met him and when I heard about the Tech Academy, checked out the website, I was like, this is what I need to do. This is the, the bridge that'll help me get over to that, uh, that realm of being a developer, which I thought was untouchable, unreachable. So. Long story short, now I'm a site reliability developer, which is basically a fancy way of saying that I fix and improve things on websites. I build new pages, and I work on often a dozen websites in a day, uh, all different websites. And so there's a lot of action. It's very fast paced, and it's a lot of fun. So this is how I started job hunting. There's my resume. This is my first resume coming out of Tech Academy. And I thought it was beautiful. I was like, man, everybody's going to want me. I'm going to have so many jobs. It didn't work out that way. Uh, not at first, at least. Um, I used a bunch of job and networking websites, LinkedIn, um, Glassdoor, anything, Monster, AngelList, etc. cetera. Yeah, I, I ended up finding that one or two ended up working better for me in terms of getting interviews, but they still weren't that great. And from when I graduated, November 24th, actually I graduated December. So before I graduated, I was sending out resumes and I sent out a total of 497, honest to God, 497 resumes. Um, it was, that was tough because all I felt was rejection. And I got a few interviews in there. I had 11 phone calls and um, I remember one of my first ones, I failed so miserably, I was so nervous. I said, oh yeah, I know JavaScript, I know JavaScript, I did the JavaScript course. And so he was asking me questions about this modern form of JavaScript and I had no idea what I was talking about. I said, yeah, I don't really know what that is, I don't really know what that is. And uh, it, was, it was pretty painful, but I also gave me skills, the personal skills involved in speaking with another. And um, those 11 phone calls helped me build up into being a much better interviewee. Um, so at the bottom there, you see it says, this resume was not great. It wasn't. Um, the short, my short perspective on why it wasn't great is really simply that this isn't scannable by job sites like Monster and um, what is that one? Elance, not Elance. Indeed, Indeed, 
cannot scan these type of web uh, uh, resumes. This was a PDF. And it works so much better when you have a simple Word doc. So on the next slide, you have my current resume. It's longer. It's three pages long. I have a bunch of projects on there. Um, this isn't really up to date because I've done a bunch of work on this new job. But this works really well because Indeed has a little, I guess you'd call it an app, and it will parse, it will scan through all of the data on your resume and then spit it out. So people who are recruiting, recruiters or just folks in a company who are looking for more folks, they can quickly see it without having to download your resume. And the last one can't be scanned, this one can be. Uh, a few other great reasons why you should go for this type of resume, it's easy to edit. I just built it in Google Docs. Um, it's ugly, but it works. And if you want to put together a similar one like this, the sequence is really just contact info, summary, projects, experience and work history and education. Education's at the bottom. Nobody really cares is what I've seen. I'm sure some people do, but not in my experience. And uh, this worked well for me in getting my most recent job because though I also had experience, I think I sent out my resume three times and then I had two job interviews. Um, and that's during coronavirus when the job market isn't so hot for most people, right? Um, I was really fortunate to, to find myself in a really hot space. So moving on, I sent this, I sent an email. Mm, okay, the backstory. I didn't get my first job through Indeed or Monster or AngelList or anything else. In fact, I got really desperate because I'd gotten through all of the job postings that I felt I was semi-qualified for or way not qualified for. And I went to Yelp and I just started looking for agencies in New York City because I knew since, since that's where I am, there had to be a ton of agencies. And so I, I yelped them and I just cold emailed them. And in all of my signatures, I have this little photo of me saying hi. And it's goofy, but it stands out. And it's not often rejected in spam or anything. And best practice I've usually seen is not to put a photo in your resume. So I figured this was a great way to show a bit of my personality. And when I spoke to the guy who hired me, who told me that this is what I'm being for. This is good for many emails. And the fact that I called me all of them. All right, carrying on. So I have a note here which says My first job, I learned how to, uh, it, it was all about building custom WordPress websites. And WordPress, for anyone who doesn't know, I'm sure there's a couple here who don't. It's a way of building blogs. Um, and it's evolved now into building, allowing you to build really complex websites. And so this company that I applied to on Yelp with this silly little thumbnail of me, all they did was build custom WordPress websites for corporate companies, big corporate companies. Um, there's this big company that they work with called Alvarez and Marcel, and they're a big consulting firm like Boston Consulting Group, ECG, or Deloitte or any of those other ones. And um, they have a ton of branches. And so we were building, I think we had 30 websites and most of them were Alvarez and Marcel owned or affiliated. So what happened is that's what they were looking for, a WordPress developer. But I had just graduated from Tech Academy three months prior and I did not know how to build a WordPress website. And the there was no technical interview with them, but really, it went first just a casual interview, then a coding challenge. And the coding challenge was to build a single page WordPress website. I figured I could do it over the weekend. Since I didn't have a job and I was desperate for one, I may as well spend that time figuring it out. And so I watched three YouTube videos, read at least five articles, and started hacking away at free software and WordPress themes. And I actually built the, the little project that they asked me to build. I have it floating around somewhere. I should have put a screen grab up of it. Um, anyhow, that's what Tech Academy gave me was 
which I find really important. And for anyone who's in the middle of the program, I've seen some folks stop at the very end. And I think that's so silly because if you just persist a little bit further, that's kind of what it takes to get a job. It's, it's just hard, it's hard to grind, it's so tough, it's overwhelming. And you just push a little bit further and you get to the end of the program. And same thing with finding your first job. It can be really tough, really depressing. <laughs> All rejections, failed interviews, and then you actually get your foot on the door with a silly little thumbnail and um, you just learn how to build a WordPress website over a weekend. Following that technical challenge, that coding challenge, I had a really simple technical interview. He asked me, um, it was in person because this was before coronavirus. And the lead developer, he asked me about the different directories, the different folders used in WordPress. It was a really basic question. Anyone who works on WordPress would know. And I didn't really know because I'd only spent a weekend working on this, but I kind of guessed it kind of right. And he let that slide. And I just showed a lot of who I was. I, I, I was definitely aiming with the fake it till you make it. That was my mindset. But I also had massive imposter syndrome. And if any of you know what that means, then I'm sure you've experienced it moving into this space because everybody seems to know more about development than you do. And that was definitely the case for me. All right, let's go to the next slide. So my first job as a WordPress web developer, I was nervous, I was scared, and I realized that those were fantastic problems to have because the other side of the coin, the other end of it was to not have a job and to be nervous and scared. So I, I preferred being nervous and scared with a job. So what was I doing? I kind of touched on this earlier. I was building custom WordPress templates and themes. All that basically means is I would create a WordPress website and allow uh, someone else to um, put in their own text and images. So I would create the, the frame of a homepage, let's say, and then someone else could drop in the text that goes on the homepage and the images, and they could swap them out, um, kind of like Squarespace or Wix has it built. When it comes to technical skills, um, that's what all these words here are. All these abbreviations have made no sense to me in the beginning. I like them now, I get them now. Um, you will too, HTML, your framework for websites. It's, it's what holds your text and holds your images and everything else. CSS, that's what styles it. SCSS does not stand for sexy CSS, but I think it should because it's a way better method of styling websites. Um, it's, it's so much more powerful. You can do a lot more. It's easier in my opinion, but you can't do sexy CSS without regular CSS. jQuery. Um, you guys know a little bit about jQuery if you've gone through the JavaScript course or you will go through the JavaScript course. Um, I believe it's still on there. And it, I used it for animation. Um, really just simple functional things like when you click on this button, something should move. Or when you mouse over this image, it should rotate. It was really simple. It was super challenging at first, just the simplest little things. Um, but the more times you practice and the more you dig in, the more comfortable you get. At least that was for me. And Git, you guys have, some of you have done the Git course and you're like, what the heck is this? Why does it not look pretty? Why is it so complex? What are these weird words like CD, change directory? Um, super useful course. Turns out the guys I worked with didn't know how to use get through the command line like we like we learned. They were using a uh, graphical user interface, like a, a program like iTunes or something to navigate folders and move things and commit things. And knowing Git is really useful. In fact, at the second job, the job I'm at now, I use Git a lot. And um, I have some colleagues who don't know Git. And that sucks. No two ways about that. All right, so I learned most of that stuff really in depth on the job. I also learned the fundamentals of, of PHP. PHP is, this was a really hard thing for me to wrap my mind around in the beginning, but it's basically the back end of websites. It allows you to uh, work with a database, it allows you to spit out HTML, and um, it's very important with older website technology and even a lot of modern stuff. It's a web language. 
Um, you can do stuff with PHP just like you can do with JavaScript. OK, so what else was I doing beyond web work? That's, that's interesting, because some people might get a job and they just want to be a web developer or they just want to be a software developer. I was like, what else can I do so I can get a raise? Because my starting rate, my starting pay, I'm going to tell you folks, it's $42,000 a year. And I live in Manhattan, and I'm married. And my wife was a full-time student. She went back to school. Uh, we could not survive very long on that. And so I was like, how can I get a raise? I'm on a three-month temporary basis. So I started writing standard operating procedures. My background used to be documentation systems and things like that. I, I have a very crazy background. Um, I used to work in oil refineries. I used to manage an offshore call center in the Philippines for a tech hub company startup. Um, I did marketing, did tile installation. Oh, I used to sell sham wows in Australia. Anyways, one skill I got really good at was creating standard operating procedures. And so I started documenting everything I was doing and putting it into a nice organized format. And I also created a course on responsive web design, which may or may not mean anything to you. But essentially, the concept is a website that can work on your phone, on your tablet, and on your computer, uh, responsive to devices. So I created a course to help out of graphic designers. Uh, I created checklists. I found new tools. I started doing all these things. And they were like, wow, you're super helpful. And I was trying to be. And three months later, I got a raise. I think it was like to 50, oh, it was to 48,000, I think, 49,000. It's like, OK, that's OK, but that's still not enough to survive on. So, I kept working at doing the same thing, more and more of the same thing, learning all the time. I was learning faster than the lead dev. I, I, I feel like at the end, I surpassed his skill level after a year and a half because three months later, I got another raise. And this time I was at 58,000 and a guaranteed bonus of $5,000. And that's a huge difference from 42,000 to 58,000. Still not really enough to survive on as a married, you know, as a couple over here in your city, but it, it did a lot for me. And uh, I, I somehow made it through. All right, next slide. After a year and a half, I got those raises. I started to get too comfortable, just like this cute little pug on Casper. And as I was telling, who was I talking with? David, right? David and I were chatting earlier, and I, I was really struggling on the boot on the boot camp. I couldn't figure out all these new terms and technology. And it was really tough. But I persisted, obviously. And then learning how to do WordPress, it persisted. And I found that I really thrive in a tough environment where I'm unstable in the sense that I don't know everything, in the sense that I am not certain about all of the tools and and um, technology. So once I started to get too comfortable at this first job at the agency in Manhattan, I, I, I started to kind of stress out. My pay had been okay, but it wasn't right. And my learning had, had dropped off. I had a job during COVID and that was great, but I knew if there was an opportunity for something, I needed to take it. So I'd stopped learning. I wonder if you guys can see these Slack notifications. That's kind of annoying. I should put it on silent next time. Uh, anyways, I felt like I could do my regular job with my eyes closed. I stopped feeling like the dumbest developer on the team. There was only three of us, but I was definitely very ignorant at the beginning. And now I was rather competent. Both of them were coming to me for help, even though one of them had a computer science degree. I just had an associate's degree in business and the boot camp. And the other one was my lead developer, and he'd been doing the job for over 10 years. I felt freaking powerful because they were coming to me for answers. But on the other hand, I wanted to not be the smartest guy in the room. And that's when I started looking, which was really scary during COVID. I'm sure any of you who are doing this now can feel that. So today. <laughs> That's what I ride now. I don't ride an electric skateboard. I ride this one wheel. So much fun. It's how I get around uh, when I go grocery shopping or if I, we just moved over to Jersey City. So I went and returned the, the rental truck and I rode home on that. It's fast. It's fun. It's a little dangerous, but I like that.
Hey, Danny, you uh, you mute, muted your mic. Hi, Danny. Yeah, the, your mic's on mute. There you go. You're back. Fantastic. My Bluetooth completely dropped. OK, I'm going to yeah. just start from the beginning. So this is what I write today. I, I, I got a job where I'm at currently now because I I sent out a resume to one job. Uh, actually, it was a recruiter had reached out to me. Back when I sent out about 500 resumes, I had also reached out to recruiters on LinkedIn and a few other places. And one guy was like, hey, we've got a WordPress developer role, and they're offering fantastic pay. I think he said it was about $120,000 a year, and I was making 68. So it was pretty much double. And um, yeah, you're going to be working on building four new WordPress websites every month. You're managing 30 websites. It's a lot of work. Um, and it was kind of boring for me at this point, but what the hell, great job. So I, I sent out an application or resume and, and I started the interview process. Most interview processes for any, or for my, for my experience that might help you guys, it's casual and then you're doing technical and then you might have a couple technical aspects. You might do a, a technical questions, you might do a whiteboard, you might do a coding challenge and then it's, a follow-up and then you see whether you get the offer. That's typically how it's been in my experience. So I went through the process with them and while I was with them, a friend of mine said, hey, the company I'm at, they're called Studio 3 Marketing. They're based in Los Angeles. They build custom websites and all kinds of things for um, plastic surgeons and lawyers. Uh, the pay is pretty good and it's a lot of fun and a great team. I thought, man, excellent. That's what I want to do. So I started the interview process there and interview went well. It was, this one was a little different. It was me, the CTO and the lead developer. And we all chatted for a while asked me, the CTO asked me some technical questions about JavaScript. That seems to be my thing. And I answered about half of them right. And then they said, we're gonna send you a coding challenge uh, just to build a, a, a custom homepage make it responsive as you can. I thought, okay, great, I do that all day, every day, no problem. I waited a few days, they didn't get back to me. I said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna have a little bit of fun. And I went and checked out their portfolio and I looked at some of their existing sites and I found bugs. And I said, ooh, this is an opportunity to shine. So I went and debugged it on my browser and I sent in the problems with the fixes to the CTO. And I said, hey, I just wanna shoot this over to you. Um, figured it might help you guys out. He was really impressed, really happy with that. He sent me the coding challenge. I knocked it out of the park. Super easy to do using the skills I learned at the first job. And they made me an offer within that same week. Um, pay is high, five figures, so it's lower than the WordPress job in Manhattan. But the team is amazing. And I can't stress how important that is because the first company, the team had its pros and its cons. There was a lot of cons. There was a negative environment. You'd get bullied around. Um, I've been called a liar by an executive in a meeting. It was really not cool. I called them out on that. Um, and I think it's important that you, you do speak up if, if you're in a negative environment and you can't leave like I was. Um, but this new company, fantastic, great energy. They, they focus on learning. They're super positive. And I've been learning so much already. And, and I'm never feeling comfortable, like that little pug on the Casper mattress. I'm constantly being challenged. And it's a little stressful, but it also gives, it helps me grow. And I'm feeling myself grow as a developer. I have a cool story. Um, I really like JavaScript. And so I was, <laughs> this is kind of silly actually. Yesterday, I had three different arrays of data, uh, a group of data. One was a group of YouTube links, another was a group of image links, and another was a group of text. And I needed to combine them all in sequence into this new array, into this new group of data. And I could have done it by hand, just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And I was like, I can program this. So I wrote a JavaScript function and I did it using a JavaScript function. It probably took me about the same amount of time, but I feel confident knowing that in the future, if I ever have to do work with such data and it's much longer than 15, no, 30 lines I can do 
if it's 150 lines, if it's 200 or a thousand, I can do exact same amount of, uh, my code can handle all of it in the same amount of time. Um, so if you're wondering what my current job is, I'm a site reliability developer. And uh, it's it's a full stack position, meaning I work on the front end and the back end. I build the the front of, of websites and make it look pretty and add text and add images. And I also do the back stuff, like I will uh, connect with the database, I will connect with an API, I will do things that pull information from elsewhere and display it, as well as send it elsewhere. Um, it's an agency that, like I said, we specialize in plastic surgeons. I'm a salaried employee with benefits. I work from home full time. I was their first work from home full time hire. Um, pretty proud about that and pays good. They gave me, um, like I said, a high figure, high five figure salary and an opportunity for a, a $5,000 bonus within 90 days. So I'm trying to perform just like I did at my first job and cross your fingers for me. Um, like I said, great team, great energy, lots of support for continued education. We're coming into the last slides. So these are some resources. Um, this is Tech Academy, and you've got a great boot camp, but it's not the end of your learning. And I don't think any of you think it does, but just in case, you're gonna learn a lot more. Free Code Camp, I did pretty soon after Tech Academy, really helpful because it was a lot of the stuff I'd already learned at Tech Academy, so it cemented that, crystallized my understanding, and it also gave me more concepts that I hadn't run into. Dev.to, a fantastic place with other developers of all skill levels writing in articles. They even have this thing called 8 CSS Games, and there's a link down there. I, I can give this to Rick, and he can share it with anyone who needs it. But if you want to get into web development, you're going to need no CSS. And those eight games are super fun, and they teach you about CSS and take your skills to a level that you're not going to get just by studying courses. YouTube great people teaching you stuff there. Because I'm in web development, front end a lot, um, I, I watch Kevin Powell, he's got some great stuff on CSS. I like some really cool tricks. Fun, fun function, he stopped putting out stuff recently, but he's got amazing videos on JavaScript. Um, I read a ton of documentation. Because I was in WordPress, I linked uh, WordPress docs here. Not necessarily gonna be uh, useful for all of you, but could be cool. Mozilla's web docs, the MDN is what they're called, and Freaking great, all kinds of good data there. I use it all the time. Um, so whatever you can do to study is useful. Like I, I even have this head first JavaScript programming book that I'm going through. It's pretty thick, but really easy reading. And anything you can do, uh, courses, I have like, I have a whole list of courses I've been going through. All right, so now we're wrapping it up. You've kind of seen where I came from, what I did, how I got my first job and everything. If you have any questions for me, now would be the time. I've got a few silly little questions you can ask there. Uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. And my portfolio site, dmsolums.com, is right there. I actually built that using Bootstrap, which most of you guys will pick up if you're doing any of the front-end courses. And um, there's a lot to Bootstrap. I've read through the entire documentation. Super powerful stuff. So if you want to be front end, I highly recommend it. And Rick, that kind of wraps up uh, most of my direct presentation. I see a couple questions here. Yeah, we do have the uh, questions in chat. And uh, I can read them to you, Danny, or you can uh, just answer them if you'd like. Yeah, I'll answer this one from Lenny. We, so, uh, I just want to let uh, the other attendees know that you're welcome to ask questions in the chat in the top right. or. Uh, we can, un you can unmute your mic and do verbal questions as well. Cool, so I'm gonna answer this one, and then if you wanna ask me a question afterwards, then please go ahead. It says, when you were applying and putting your resume together, what did you include from the Tech Academy? What projects did you build on your own? Hmm, good question. My resume was super skinny, as it is for probably all of you coming into Tech Academy and then coming out of it. I included every single project. Um, I included my, C Sharp uh, Insurance, I think was what it was, little program. I included uh, the pizza website. I included, I even included <laughs> the uh, coding challenge for my first job. So anything I built, I was like, yeah, let's just throw it on there. Um, as far as Tech Academy, some people think that boot camps are 
a negative thing. And I don't know who those people are. Other people tell me that they exist. So just to be safe, I wrote um, in education, I said that um, I have a, a software developer certificate from the tech academy. And I didn't write boot camp, but I'm still rather proud to have it on my resume and I'm, it's going to stay out. It's also on my LinkedIn. If you check out my LinkedIn, I put every single certificate I can on there. Some of them are super silly. Like um, there's a security, S-U-C-U-R-I. Um, they're a security company for WordPress. They have a security course that is so easy and a five-year-old could do it. I did it. I put it on there because I'm really interested in security. And the more certificates I have on there, the more it backs me up as someone aiming in that space. Hopefully that answers your question, Lenny. Benjamin, I see another question there from you. I'm a front-end grad from Tech Academy. I've been trying so hard to get a job, and I'm learning on my own too. Good for you. Just put my first React app together, nice, and published it to GitHub. I'm wondering how you got past all the rejections. Everyone I talked to is saying that I'm not seasoned up. Oh, man, I, I feel for you. Yeah, uh, React, I still struggle with React, so good job for putting that together. I've gone through a couple courses. I'm in the middle of one now. I decided to go back into JavaScript because I was just struggling too much. When it comes to getting past rejections, there's not really any good trick for it, man. I just knew that there, the necessity for me to get a job was so much higher than how bad I felt when I got a rejection. I have a wife and she's a full-time student. And I, I felt it was my responsibility to support us, even if I could barely do it on my first job salary. So I just kept going. And I would send out, this is important too, I would send out a ton of resume. I sent out, I figured it was numbers game. So I sent out uh, 10 to 25 a day. I would never go below five, but I typically did 10 to 15, sometimes 20. Um, I went for really low quality applications. Like I didn't often do a cover letter or I just changed a few words on the cover letter. If you can go for higher quality, that might be smart. Um, but really it's just persistence because there's gonna be somebody who is going to take a chance on you because they see who you are and they respect it. They see you're hungry and they appreciate it. And they know you're gonna give it your all, which I think you should communicate that too. You're really willing to put in whatever it takes. Cause I, I said that and I, I did that. And uh, someone will see it and appreciate it. He said, yeah, it's crazy. That's what I'm experiencing. Yeah, definitely keep pushing. Um, I wanna mention that this is interesting. I, I flipped the, the, the roles because when I left my first job, I actually, um, I, I decided to help find a replacement for me. I'd done pretty good at that job and, and I had a lot of free time. And so I um, started, I posted a job posting on Indeed. We had like over 300 applicants in a week. And I started going through them, filtering by location, filtering by skill level. Um, but not trying to be too too much of a jackass about it because I know what it's like to be brand new. And, and I would just check out their resumes. And that's how I came to the realization that having, let's see if I can show you, having a resume like this is so much better than having a resume like this because these ones indeed couldn't figure out. And I had to download them and I had to look at them and I was like, this kind of thing, but... So these resumes, while uglier, work better for job posting sites. Um, hopefully that helps you too, Benjamin. If anyone has any other questions, I am open to help you out. All right, Danny. Well, that's a uh, that was a really good talk, and I think it was really good for our uh, current students, and uh, kind of gives them a sense of what it's going to be like when they uh, finish the program. Yeah, uh, I I see. There's one more question from Cal. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, what all is covered in the JavaScript course? Well, uh, I did it almost two years ago, and I know it's changed since then. Um, when I did it, it was introductory JavaScript 
concepts and then jQuery. So probably Benjamin would know more than I would about what's covered. When it comes to Node.js, the most important thing I can suggest is having a really solid grasp on JavaScript itself. So they call it vanilla JavaScript because they don't want to say just JavaScript with no other frameworks or, or accessories added on. So if you can understand vanilla JavaScript, especially the modern form called ES6, that'll really help you um, because it uses that, just like React does. If you're wondering if it's covered, parts of it are covered, but there's no way you're going to learn all of JavaScript from Tech Academy and not from any single course either. You, you should definitely go through with the, the, the boot camp if you're already in it. And uh, if you aren't, I suggest you do. And then it's just a matter of reading documentation or a great book like this. So many people recommended it. That's why I picked it up. I'm still early, but I love it. And um, doing any other courses and, and, and playing around. I, I liked free code camps JavaScript course, but even that wasn't enough. So it's just going through it again and again and playing with it. And now I feel pretty comfortable with JavaScript. And I know I could dig into uh, Node.js um, if I wanted to, which eventually I will. The name of the book, Cal, uh, Catherine, I'm going to write it. Head first. Head first JavaScript programming. It has a, a blonde lady on the front. It's by Eric Freeman and Elizabeth Robson. And Jesse, you write, why would you recommend the bootcamp over just learning on your own? Great question. I did a lot of both. I went to the bootcamp first and then I learned on my own. And I also tried to learn on my own in the very beginning. I gave up in the very beginning because I couldn't figure out CSS. I was like, what is the cascading aspect of it? Why does CSS, which means cascading style sheets, what does that mean? And at the bootcamp, that's what I figured out. I learned what that is and it gave me certainty in the terminology, which is used throughout every course you're gonna study from now for eternity. And if you can't figure out the terms, then you can't understand the concepts, then you can't do it. And the bootcamp gives you that ability to understand the concepts and certainty in your ability to learn other things in the future because you know those terminology. That's why I'd recommend this bootcamp in particular. I know there's other bootcamps that are great, I have other friends, but other bootcamps, they've gotten jobs too and done well. That's my two cents on it. Um, and I think that's all, Rick. Well, and I think uh, doing a boot camp, you have instructors that are there for you to help you when you get stuck. And uh, so you have really good support when you do a boot camp. Yeah. I, I want to mention I've taken a few courses that are supposed to have live instructors to help you, and they don't really. It's not at all like being at the Tech Academy, where before COVID, I would just stand up all the time and like, Hey, can you help me? And when I studied remote at Tech Academy, I would still be able to call in or whatever. And I know that um, I know that they're still available. The instructors are still available during COVID. So availing yourself of them at every moment is fantastic. And I got over my discomfort in bothering them pretty fast. So I do have a question, Danny. Uh, do you? Uh, how do I get a sham wow? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't recommend the ones I sold. They were uh, made in China, and I, I took a couple for myself, and then I threw it in the washer, and then I threw it in the dryer, and it exploded. It was just ShamWow fluff on everything. So the cheap ones wouldn't recommend. The good ones, Amazon, as, as of everything else. All right, awesome stuff. All right, Danny, well, thank you. Um, was anyone, did you answer that Catherine's question there? Yeah, sure. Let me see if am I still presenting? Yes. Okay. Let me shut off the presentation. So, can you see me? Okay. Uh, Catherine, you said you did the Python. You did a Python course on your own through Coursera and got stuck on silly stuff. Yes. Yes, exactly. I got stuck on stupid stuff all the time. My first book was an HTML book back before there were courses or anything. I was 16, that was 2006. 
Marcel. And I got through the HTML and then I, I, I built the ugliest website because I didn't understand CSS. Um, and those really fundamental struggles that you just bang your head against the table, you can get through much faster with an instructor and you can get them to bang their head on the table trying to explain it to you, which is super easier. Um, okay, guys. You're very welcome, David. You're very welcome, everyone else. I really uh, appreciate you guys giving me 45 minutes of your time for this. All right, Danny, thank you. I appreciate it. And um, yeah, I uh, will definitely have you uh, back um, again for another talk. That was great. Um, and if there's anybody here that uh, isn't uh, a student with the Academy, you can learn more about our school at learncodinganywhere.com. All right, so thanks, Danny. Great. And uh, this is an inside joke, but uh, I'm still finding SpongeBob around the camp. <laughs> you know. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, it's an inside joke, but uh, when Danny was in Portland, that was a uh, that was an ongoing thing. So. Yes. Yes, indeed. Cool stuff. All right, thanks, Danny. We'll uh, talk to you soon, and uh, take care. All right, you too, guys. Bye. Bye now.